is back home on the hill after a long and revealing three-game trip to Canada this Thanksgiving weekend. The Hilltoppers can move to 3-0 at home with a win over an in-state team, Campbellsville, out of NAIA today. Western is happy to see the band playing and to be back home at Diddle Arena this evening. It is great to have you with us. Jack Kaiser from our Arkansas State big man, Hal Schmidt. So game eight in year one for Steve Lutz. It's still a feeling out process right now, but how what's been very clear about this team is how aggressive they are on both sides of the ball. They are, and uh, sometimes a little over aggressive offensively. They're making some mistakes. They're, they're not getting to the free throw line. Their assist numbers are low. They've got to incorporate everybody in the flow of the offense. Well, the man who's been running the offense so far for Western has been Don McHenry. He's been a great addition to this team. Don has been the most consistent Hilltopper. He had a really good tournament uh, over the over the last weekend. Uh, shot the ball well, shot 50% from three. Nobody else is doing that on this team right now. As a matter of fact, up there, we shot tw below 20% for the tournament. So we've got to be able to find the range from long distance. Don runs the Hilltoppers. Jace Wallace runs the show for Campbellsville. Mr. Everything, he's a senior, averages 10 points. Four and a half rebounds, three and a half assists. Just an all-around team player. Shoots the ball at a, about a 50% clip. Still work on his three-point range, but he's a good player for the uh, Campbellsville Tigers. Just an assist shy of a triple-double last game against Harris Stowe on Saturday. Campbellsville playing their lone Division I exhibition tonight against Western Kentucky on the road about an hour and a half trip to Diddle Arena. Western trying to stop a two-game losing streak, ended the Northern Classic in Quebec on a bit of a sour note, and can move to 3-0 at home with a win today. Yeah, both those games against Canisius and UNC Asheville, toppers had halftime leads that they saw wilt in the second half. They've got to be able to start it well like they have been, but finish well too. Yeah, they've had leads at halftime their last few games. They started a little bit slow the last time at home against Kentucky State, but a fast start in the first possession on the feed to Rodney Howard. Well, they have used Rodney Howard. They've tried to run the offense through him and run it inside out, and he's done a pretty good job. He does need to be a bit more aggressive. He was aggressive there. Aggressive steal for Marshall. There he goes, Rising Rock Marshall. They call him Woo, and there's a reason for that. He tends to make good things happen offensively off of defense. About as good of a start as you could hope for for Western. Quick shot, and it was blocked on the recovery from Marshall. Out of bounds stays with Campbellsville on the three try from Darius Harding. Marshall's big smile tried to coax the official into believing that it was off the Campbellsville player, but Les Jones has been around this game a long time. He knew better than that. James Dukes, Kevin Mathis joins Leslie Jones today. Jack Kaiser House made it's great to have you with us. Third home game for Western Kentucky this year. All have been against non-D1 teams, and Western's taking care of business. Off the spin, it's a score for Jace Wallace. Wallace gets a kind rim roll, gets the Tigers on the board. This is a good offensive team in Campbellsville out of NAIA, scoring 87 points a game. That's top 30 nationally. Good ball movement for Western. Don McHenry on the drive with the left. That's what Don does best. He loves to slash to the basket. He and Jalen Jackson for WKU and Christian Lander when he is in there. Both those, all three of those guys have lightning speed and they get a first step on you, they're gonna score. Double figures the last six games for McHenry. We said it right off the top. He has been Western's most consistent offensive presence. And a miss on the drive from Kobe Penny. Offensive board for Chandler Clements. And the stick back doesn't go. Brandon Newman collects for Western. This Hilltopper team likes to get the ball out in transition, and there's about four guys on the court right now that have the green light to go whenever they get it. With the green light, it's Newman. And the basket counts, and one chance for Brandon Newman. You'd see Brandon get untracked. He struggled in the uh, Canada. Let's see, he shot 185 from the field, 2 of 15 from long range. He's a better player than that, transferred from Purdue. He's got, a, he's got a good game, nice athletic build. He's capable of shooting from range or taking it to the rim. Yeah, they expect a lot from Brandon Newman. Misses the free throw for the three-point play chance. 
like you said, transferring over from Purdue, a key player for the Boilers the last few years. Going up for the dunk, a miss from Darius Harding. And the other way, Colum Bay with the deuce. That's what I'm talking about, that transition game right there. That's Enoch Colum Bay taking it coast to coast after the rebound on the other end. And a timeout for Campbellsville and head coach Brent Vernon. Not liking what he's seen so far, especially on the offensive side. And he's got a, these guys haven't uh, played anybody that's run out on them like the Hilltoppers have to get this one started. So he's got to cool their jets a little bit and uh, get them back on track. He knows this is the most athletic team that Campbellsville will face all year. So defensively, it's really important for them to stay in front of the ball, and they just haven't done that yet. No, the entry pass there to to a much, much bigger Rodney Howard resulting in a dunk to open the game, and that's Tyrone Marshall on the steal, taking it in for the flush with finesse. Again, a really good start for Western Kentucky, who came out sluggish against Kentucky State the last time at home. Steve Lutz was very open in saying, if we play like we did in the first half, we're not going to win many games. But Western did have a good second half on, a way, on its way to a win, and a good start tonight up 10-2. To Clements from the baseline. A little short jumper off the off the left baseline of 10, 12 feet or so was not defended very well. Former Division I player in Chandler Clements at Austin P. Newman off the reset. Step back three straight away. Out to Marshall. Finds Howard right in front of the rim. Oh, he missed the bunny, and it's rebounded by Clements. That can't happen. No, Howard's had some problems with those easy ones like that. He needs needs a good, strong step to the basket and the dunk. And Howard, a very talented player, been playing really well recently. A rare miss for him straight in front of the rim. And a rebound to Newman. Poked away, but stays with Western. Darius Harding there to poke the ball away from Newman, who was not protecting the ball on the rebound. So the Tops will bring it against no pressure, three quarters of the length of the court. There's Steve Lutz, again, his first year as the head coach at Western Kentucky. He knows how talented this team is. He wants his team to play aggressive. They have. They're just not knocking down shots from the outside until there from Marshall right on cue. Marshall was 0 for 8 in the tournament up there, so it's uh, nice to see him hit his first one. Yeah, Lutz is, you know, it's a, it's a deal where, like a lot of coaches with a lot of new faces, they're still trying to develop the chemistry. A trip like that, these MTE events, multiple team events, are good for that because the guys are forced to be around each other, learn to bond, work through adversity. Clemens cut off with 10 to shoot. Now it's Harding in the corner. Marshall's defense has been great so far. And a tough shot comes up short. McHenry comes away with it. Western wants to run. Here's McHenry, rejected. Out to Christian Lander. And a player down, it's a foul on Western and Rodney Howard. A lot of teaching moments for Steve Lutz, even with a nine point lead, 13 to four Western over Campbellsville, an in-state matchup. Western off to a hot start. Coaches are always teaching. Western Kentucky leading Campbellsville 13 to four, just over four minutes into this one. Western trying to move to three and L at home with a win over Campbellsville out of NAIA. Steve Lutz in his first season as the head coach at Western Kentucky took Texas A&M Corpus Christi to the NCAA tournament back to back years. And that's a big reason why he got the job here at Western. Yeah, he that's the Southland Conference School when he had inherited that. Uh, that job down there in his first year, it was a program, a bit of a shambles, a lot of new faces. They did not win many games, but the, the subsequent two years, he won the conference tournament, took them to the, to the NCAA, and, uh, you know, young coaches get noticed like that. Nearly another steal for Marshall. Campbellsville keeps it alive with some space. Up top, it's Jace Wallace. And it bounces to Babacar Fay. Jalen Jackson also into the game out of the break for Western. It's kind of been a two-man rotation in Howard and Fay at the post. Marshall knocks it down again. Two threes for Tyrone Marshall Jr. His first two threes of the year. Yeah, he's, 
he hasn't found the range until tonight. It's nothing, nothing like Holmes. Good, good to get back. Quick trigger for Kobe Penny, and he drills it. Barely moved the net. Kobe Penny, out of basketball the last three years, initially started his career at Bellarmine when they were in Division II. Decided to step away from the game, got the itch again over the offseason, and Campbellsville scooped him up. Bounce pass inside for Fay, and he gets the roll. Good job by Baba. Went up uh, in some heavy traffic there and got the, got the roll over the front of the rim. College of Charleston transfer, a really good athlete. A couple of double doubles already for Fay off the bench. Jay Milburn on the attack, and he's fouled. Christian Lander whistled for it, the transfer from Indiana. See some body contact there. Christian Lander also across the arms. No doubt about that. He was not going to let him get the shot off. Coach Vernon going with his original five starting players so far. It's a Campbellsville team that its depth has been hit hard a little bit early in the season. They've lost three key players to injury already. Actually, four. Marcellus Vale, Keiston Brown, Javon Smith and Cam Vick, those first three out for the year. And their leading scorer, Vick, at 16 a game, is out with a high ankle sprint. Landers open in the corner. And an offensive rebound for Fay. Off the reset, Jackson. Another three try missed and tapped to Harding for Campbellsville. Dante Allen still struggling from three. Nine of 31 now from long range on the season. And an impressive drive for Penny. Took the contact and got it to go. Contact he's not afraid of. He measures in at six foot 205. So he, he is stout and does not mind contact. A physical player. Again, hasn't even played college basketball the last few years. But Brent Vernon said he's starting to get his legs back. Moved into the starting lineup when Cam Vick went down. And at 11 points per game, Kobe Penny is looking pretty sharp early. Lane violation on Western will give Penny another try at the free throw line. And he was very short on that one. He's an 83% shooter on this young season, 10 of 12 coming into this game. We're just defying trends early. Marshall already has two threes after not hitting any <laughs> the first seven games. Tegan Moore into the game for Western. Here's Allen off the bounce. Extra pass Lander finds Moore. Two for seven start from deep for Western Kentucky. That's been an area of concern so far for the Hilltoppers. Moore's a great scorer, but three of 10 on the season after missing that first one. Mid-range for Tyrell Hunt. That's his game, the mid-range for Hunt, transferring over from East Los Angeles College. Faye on the inside sends it in. Hoppers with a size advantage, whether it's Faye or Howard, they definitely need to work the ball inside, try to work the offense through the paint. Noah Gordon up top, coming in off the bench for Campbellsville. A versatile, good shooter in the post. This is Harding. Off the bounce. Got the blocking foul, and Harding will head to the strike. Five team fouls now on WKU, one for Campbellsville. This is an area that Coach uh, Lutz has talked a lot about. You see the drive into the paint there, and uh, Jackson was not set. It's an area that Coach Lutz really wants to improve on, is being aggressive defensively. We've got bodies we can put in if you get tired to come out. But uh, he wants to do it without fouling. And we have put player, our opponents to the, uh, to the line way too many times. And WKU not getting there often enough. Why do you think there's been so many fouls? Just too aggressive? Defense has got to be played with the feet first. You've got to move those feet laterally to, to block against the drive and, and passes, what have you. We've been too too much hands. We've been reaching too much and, and getting guys across the forearm. Timeout for Steve Lutz in Western Kentucky. We'll keep it here at Diddle Arena. 20 to 14 Western now leads. Yeah, finding that balance has been a point of emphasis for Western. Like we mentioned straight away, it's a feeling out process for Steve Lutz's system. This is largely a new team. Eight newcomers. 
no guys that have been with Western their entire career in the rotation. So everyone's still figuring out, and that's really what the non-conference is for. You know, Jack, I think you're going to see that more and more across the board with, with colleges, universities. You're going to have a lot of turnover due to the the NIL and the transfer portal. It makes it makes it very easy for players if they're unsatisfied with whatever, their playing time, the the climate, whatever it is, they can go to another school. So you're going to have a lot of that, I think, uh, as the years go on. Western already showing its depth. Jack Eadlin into the game. And Dante Allen comes up short. Two for eight for Western Kentucky from deep. Off the tip, they'll reset here with Jackson. Into the teeth of that defense. Moore misses the inside out three. Edlin tries. A few misses on essentially one possession for Western from downtown. It's a team that is a capable shooting team. They just aren't showing it right now. Edlin now one of seven from long range on the season. Tegan Moore, not much better either. And he's a prolific scorer in high school in Kentucky. Yeah, Edlin out of Mail High School in Louisville. Moore is 3 of 11 from distance on the season. Those are the two freshmen that will see the most time for Steve Lutz's team. Talking to Babacar Fay right now, again, lots of guys will rotate into this game regardless of the score, especially in the first half. He's still um, working on settling into a lineup. Right now you see 11, 12 guys frequently getting multiple digit minutes. Colin Bay matched up with Hunt. Got a one-on-one -on -one chance, and Colin Bay takes advantage. Colin Bay's a strong young man, left-handed. Feels very comfortable taking it in, especially against a smaller player into the paint. Colin Bay now with four points, took just one shot last game against UNC Asheville. But there is Hunt again with the mid-range. Tyrell Hunt, a couple of dribbles and stuck it right in Colin Bay's face. That's old school. It is. And we've got a foul away from the basketball. Goes on Gordon. That'll send us to break. 22-16, Western on top of Campbellsville in an in-state in matchup. 22-16, Western Kentucky on top of Campbellsville. There's Peyton Halsey who played here at Diddle Arena. Yeah, as assistant coach, he came by before the game and says, you don't remember me, do you? He played here, in, I think his last year was 2014. Well, he's a lot bigger than he was then. <laughs> he was a very slender young man, very polite, very pleasant, came over and told me his name, then it, then it dawned on me who it was. But uh, it's nice to see players moving out from here and finding their place in the world, whether it's in sports or business or academics or whatever it might be. Peyton is uh, making a mark for himself in Campbellsville right now. You're an encyclopedia, Hal. You remember everybody. Uh, it takes some effort sometimes, <laughs> believe me. All the years begin to uh, start to run together a little bit. Hal Schmidt, former Arkansas State big man. I'm Jack Kaiser. It's great to have you with us. Trying to get the clock right here as we get back underway in the first half. Third home game for Western Kentucky. All against non-Division I teams taking on an NAIA team in Campbellsville today. It's about an hour and a half away, just south of Louisville. Colum Bay with four points already, now has six. Went to the right hand that time, moving across the lane left to right. Again, he's left-handed. Went up with the right, got that one to go down. They're trying to get Colum Bay more looks on the inside. Looks like it. Yeah, they got uh, WKU's got an edge on points in the paint right now, 18 to four. Noah Gordon from the corner and off the heel for Campbellsville. Colum Bay so athletic coming over from Indian Hills Community College. And he's going to the line, a chance to make it eight points already, not even halfway through the first half. You see the transition game of WKU, Colin Bay, Jackson, McHenry, those guys right there, if they get a ball on a rebound or a quick outlet, they're going to run. They're going to look at the first option, which is taking it to the paint. Uh, but they're also pretty heady in that they won't force it if it's not there to bring it out and get set up in the, in the half court. So these guys are fun to watch. They, they like to push the accelerator down. Brandon Newman into the game for Western Kentucky. We talked about Steve Lutz being at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. They averaged 80 points a game when he was the head coach there. Scoring has not been a problem under Steve Lutz. 
No, it, it hasn't been. And it's just, um, you know, the three point tends to be the issue right now. And, you know, when you, you play a game and you make two or three shots and you've shot it 20 times, that's the same as 17 or 18 turnovers. Usually long rebounds that can result in run outs the other way. So it has a counter effect to what you intended. Hunt in the mid range again. You love his old school style. Oh, I do. He gets that ball up high on his jump shot. He's about 6'3 player. Uses every inch of his height to his advantage. Did you have a high release? I did. Newman with a clean release and out of bounds stays with Western. I found out early that I didn't like the taste of leather. So I, in high school, had to get that ball up high. I shot it from low, uh, junior high, and you can get away with that kind of stuff. But in high school and then in college, if you don't get it up, you're going to eat it a lot. So you did it out of necessity. Absolutely. Self-preservation. Here's McHenry. Step back off the screen. Air ball, but it goes right to Marshall. Perfect bounce. Marshall in the right place at the right time. That's the hardest ball to rebound is one that doesn't hit the rim. It makes a lot of plays like that, though. Yes, it does. Ton of defensive plays, a stopper for this team, and good hustle player on offense as well. Already with two threes tonight. His first two of the year. Here he is guarding Hunt. Good matchup. And Hunt over the top almost got another. But the rebound to Newman and Western. Hesitation for McHenry. Extra pass. Column Bay. Sidestep through the lane, was blocked. That was Milburn, the best shot blocker for Campbellsville. Yeah, he was off, Colin Bay off balance, had to get the ball uh, up, and he had to release it down low, and was knocked away. Milburn on the roll, juggling catch and foul. Colin Bay went for the fake, Milburn then just waited for him to come back down and went up into the contract, did not make the, the basket, but absorbed the contact, and he'll get two free throws here. A lot of ball there for Colin Bay, but some body as well. Players got to realize that when you really emphasize the downswing of your arm, that that looks like a foul. Not always is, but it looks like a foul will be called as such more times than not. It has to be darn near perfect to get away with it. When you're behind a guy like that, right. it's all in your favor to be able to take it away from him. But uh, that resulted in a foul. And Milburn, the sophomore, local kid from Campbellsville, knocks down both. And ball loose to Clements. Here come the Tigers. And Wallace in transition, doesn't get the bounce, offensive rebound. Extra pass, Penny left alone, and got it. He can shoot it. Smooth stroke for Penny. Inside Howard, off the turn, comes up short, good contest. Campbellsville hanging around here in the first half under nine to go, down just five. Good move for Clements. Drive and kick. Wallace had a wide open corner three. Could it cash in? But Penny does from the top of the key. What you call second chance points right there. Did a kill a team quicker than anything. And a Top big big line change coming as Steve Lutz was pointing to multiple people on the bench out. Yeah, he does not hesitate to go to the bench. He'll put five new ones in if he feels like it's necessary. Uh, only one I saw go to the scores table, however, however was uh, Faye. So we'll see when they come out of this break who he's actually going with. But Campbellsville has drawn back to within two points by virtue of their three-point shots here lately. They've only hit three of ten, but they've all come in a clump. The first one, Penny from long, the top, uh, top of the key there. That was Wallace, I'm excuse, sorry, not Penny. The Penny hit one in that, that uh, clump of shots also. Three triples now for Campbellsville. And Steve Lutz, this is similar to the Kentucky State game, where Kentucky State was right in it about this point before Western made a late run in the first half. Just some sluggish defense. Yeah, it, you know, basketball's a funny game when shots aren't falling, and I'm talking about the three-point. Toppers have missed eight of them. They're 11. It just continues to weigh on you, and it affects both. You play on both ends of the court. So it's Jackson, Lander, Newman, Faye, and Marshall on the floor now for Western. Old board for Faye. 
Lander tries and got it. Finally hits one. That's Lander's first three-pointer made in three attempts. And a steal. Lander, three-point play chance the old-fashioned way, right after the traditional three-pointer. Got the steal, got the basket, little high archer off the glass. Let's see a look at it here coming down the left side of the lane, went up with his left hand, his strong hand, kissed it off the square, and gets rewarded with a little icing here, the free throw. Makes it. And another one. Coaches rave about his speed. He can be a dynamic scorer. He's just learning to not press to score. Yeah, and he's he's had trouble too being aggressive defensively uh, without fouling. Newman in the passing lane there. Now an eight-point lead for Western thanks to Lander. Yeah, it was just two-point, and Lander ran off two three-point plays. One he made three-pointer, and then a basket and a free throw. We'll see if that sparks Western here. Penny off the bounce. No. And out to Faye. Here comes Jackson. Maybe just as fast as Lander, but he lost it in transition. Pass to Milburn at the top of the key. Hit him right in the chops. Oh, Faye goes down. A blocking foul called on him. A hard hedge on Penny. And it stays with Campbellsville after the break. But Christian Lander, with six straight points himself, has given Western an eight-point lead. Campbellsville hanging around here in the first half, down just 33-25. Christian Lander in Western Kentucky on top of Campbellsville, 33-25, under eight to go here in the first half. Lander coming over from Indiana last year. Had six straight points out of the last break to help Western out to this lead. Thompson put seven players in the scorer's column. Lander just got there with a flourish, hitting a long-range three-pointer, and then off of a stolen inbounds pass and a basket, got the got fouled in the process and made an old-fashioned three-point play. Initially recruited by Archie Miller to Indiana, coming out of Evansville Rice. A really talented player, five-star recruit, and Western's happy to have him now. Saw him in transition there. He is lightning fast. Faye in the post, spinning, and got to that left block. Faye is very often. You saw him show it right there. He's very patient in the post when he catches. He doesn't get in a hurry, doesn't make a lot of mistakes down there. You saw him there with the, uh, with the head fake and then going to the bucket. What a save for Jackson. Back to Faye and goes up for two. And the big man now rewarded for running the court. Gets the pass from Jackson off the steal and two more points. That's the defensive intensity that Steve Lutz is looking for. Absolutely. Tops uh, now match their largest lead of 12. Offensive foul as well. All the momentum with Western Kentucky the last few minutes. And that's on Jay Milburn. You'll notice the Hilltoppers don't do a lot of fancy things defensively. They will pick up full court and they'll make you a turn. You know, if you're bringing the ball up, they'll make you a turn and reverse, reverse pivot and uh, just kill six or eight seconds getting the ball to half court before you get into your half court set. So Steve Lutz likes to do that, doesn't do much stunning out of it. Campbellsville knew they had a big challenge facing an aggressive man-to-man -man defense for Western today. Brent Vernon knew that coming in. Jalen Jackson leading that defensive charge along with Tyrone Marshall, Jr. Cameron Willis for Campbellsville. They'll just uh, poke the ball away from behind on Jalen Jackson. He's driving to the basket. Here's Jackson driving on Willis now. Finds Newman. Again, wide open look. He's, He's not going down. good looks. He really is. The only thing that I can see is his shot is a bit flat. Uh, a lot of times shooters will shoot it more like a javelin than a, than a basketball. And, Tyrell Hunt again off the short jumper. He loves that mid-range game. Yeah, Hunt's been really impressive so far. Eight points all in the mid-range game for Hunt. A junior from Chicago. Lander on the pull-up. Nearly got the floater with the left, but off to the left. And the rebound to Hunt in Campbellsville. Pulls up again, high release, and connects. Mm. Got to step up on Tyrell Hunt. Got to figure out where your shooters are. Newman from the corner. Got it this time. 
Newman hits. Newman now one of four from long range. Toppers improved to four of 15. It doesn't sound like much, but hey, 27% right now from three-point land is an improvement for them. Clemens pulls up, nearly hit the fadeaway, and the rebound to Marshall. It has been well documented the shooting struggles for Western recently. But Steve Lutz still confident his team can shoot, and they're getting open looks. Marshall hits his third game. Marshall has been 0 for the season, and he comes in and hits three big threes here in the first half. 13 for Marshall, and here comes Jackson. Out to Marshall. Sent away by Milburn. Excellent defense. We'll go to him. Are they going to go to the media break here? Not quite. Okay. All right. Enoch Kimble back in for the Hilltoppers. Jackson to the bench. Wu Marshall goes to the bench. Tegan Moore, the freshman, comes in for WKU for Marshall or for Newman. Again, Western rotating through here in the first half, regardless of score. Moore did get six minutes in Western's last game against Asheville. His lone minutes of the Northern Classic. Pocket pass to Fay outside McHenry. Here's Lander, the close out for Penny. Finds Columbe and rolls out from the corner. Had a good look. Penetration by Lander created the offensive opportunity with an open three-point corner shot. Columbe eliminates that space for Hunt, made that shot a lot tougher. Yeah, he was challenged on that one and pulled the ball. We were looking right down the shot line, and he pulled the ball bad to the left. You got to get real tight on Hunt, who has 10 points, only trailing Penny to lead the way for Campbellsville. Toppers extend their largest margin right now with 14. They got a chance to build on that. Here's McHenry, leading scorer for Western this year. Out to Lander, and hits a wide open three. That pushes the lead to 17. That's what they need for the confidence, is to be able to hit a few of these three-pointers. Gordon got a step, lost it on the way up, gets it back off the side of the backboard. And Wallace grazes the front of the rim on the mid-range. Lander trying to make a play, leaps into the scorer's table. Yep, never could get a handle on it, Jack. It'll be Campbellsville basketball when we come back, but the largest lead for Western, up by 17 here in the first. Western Kentucky out to its largest lead in the game, 46-29 over Campbellsville. And they've used some threes to help spark this run. Hey, we've talked a lot about WKU's inability to hit threes. That's what's built this lead right now. They've run a 19-4 run due to the threes that we're seeing several right here. Marshall's hit three, Newman's hit a couple, Lander hit a couple in that sequence. So the topper's now six of 18 from long range. That's 33%, a major improvement for where they've been on the season so far. Last in Conference USA in three-pointers per game at five a game and 25% from downtown. But again, the shots are wide open, so they have to keep taking them. They're getting good shots. They're just, they're just not going down. It's a confidence issue right now. And once you start making them, they tend to come in bunches. And that's what offensive teams, high-octane offensive teams can do is they can run off a lot of points in a short period of time. It's still been a good offensive team, averaging nearly 80 points a game, even with those three-point struggles. Here's Don McHenry. Finds Columbe. And Moore curling off a screen into Howard. And a foul on the floor before Howard got the shot off. So there's 16 fouls on the Campbellsville Tigers, so no free throws yet. It's a pretty clean game so far. Yeah, it has been. Not a lot of whistles. Six fouls for each team. Again, this is an exhibition game for Campbellsville. 
Still playing very hard, trying to get the win on the road. Eight and two start this season. The Tigers, McHenry left alone, and too strong. Well, he was not sure of himself on that, and as a matter of fact, his toe was on the line. But here comes Lander, all alone. Lander goes up with the slam. Lander's got some good elevation. He can get up, and he got to show it right there on the breakaway two-hand dunk. Tops build a 19-point advantage. Were you one to try and dunk any chance you got? You know, no, I did not. I don't think I ever had a dunk in a game, believe it or not. Never? Uh, never did. Never did. You're pretty tall. Well, I played the perimeter mostly, but, uh, you know, I, I didn't have opportunities to dunk it. And it, dunking wasn't as big a deal as it is today. That's a fair point. Kick out to Noah Gordon for Campbellsville. Sideways spin, heavily affected by Howard. Colin Bay dishes out to Moore. Catch and release, he was open. Yeah, he can't find the range. Tegan is uh, 0 for 3 in this one so far. But with those open shots, Western will continue to fire. Up by 19. Good the backdoor cut. Jordan cut. Jordan Graham misses an elite foul call. Nice backdoor cut and a super pass from Penny at the top of the key. Just couldn't make the conversion. We'll have to earn these at the strike. Open backdoor cuts usually don't make coaches very happy. Mm, not the defensive coach. The offensive coach are usually, right. that, it's a thing of beauty. Defensively, it's all about seeing your man in the ball. And that's just one of the key fundamental components of basketball is you have to see your man and you have to see the ball. Coaches work on that from a very young age, trying to teach that concept. It's hard to do. Sometimes you get caught watching the ball, you get burned back, back to work. This is a really good passing team in Campbellsville, especially for the NAI level. Nearly 20 assists per game, which is top 20 in the country for NAI. Brent Vernon said their passing has been contagious this year, even with the injury. They've played well. Deflected away from Howard and swatted out of bounds back to Campbellsville. So Howard, Howard has good hands in the paint, but I would like to see him be a little more aggressive going getting that ball. That pass was a little bit to the baseline side of him, but certainly within reach. I think he could have gotten that with a little more exertion. He's just not, he's a little more passive as far as receiving passes go. Good defenders aren't going to just let you stand there and, uh, and receive a pass, though. So you want him to be a little bit more decisive on the offensive oh, side? Oh, no question. Still played pretty well the last three games for Western. 14 points a game during that stretch. Edlin on the front gets it back for Western Kentucky. Edlin was defending up the lane. The pass was over the top. But he did. Edlin's a gritty little player now. He stuck his nose right in there, forced the turnover, so he'll bring it the length of the court now. Even playing an NAI level team. He's the smallest guy on the floor yeah. at 5'10, but earning time. That's how much the coaches have liked what they've seen from Jack Edlin. Colin Bay with the left gets the roll. He is so athletic. He is very athletic, very strong. He worked that ball up through some contact to get it to go in. Colin Bay call for the foul in the backcourt. That'll send Willis to the line. It was on, that foul was on Edlin. That's the toppers as a team, eighth foul, six on Campbellsville. Campbellsville's offense has gone cold here at the end of the half. 0 for their last six from the floor. They haven't had a field goal in four and a half minutes. There's a free throw for them. Certainly been a better defensive stretch for Steve Lutz's team, and Brent Vernon is searching for answers. After some three balls early, kept Campbellsville in it. It was 27 to 25. Topper, oh. Topper's uh, taking advantage of those Campbellsville turnovers. 11-0 points off turnovers right now. A very aggressive defensive team, and they're playing well. And holding the inside as they lobbed it for Howard. Howard will go to the free throw line. Get a couple. Tops have only attempted four at this point. Campbellsville's 8 of 11. Topper's 2 of 4. Howard does not get to the free throw line very much. He's only shot six coming into this one and made four of them. He makes the first. Still a lot of chatter between Steve Lutz and Jack Edlin. Yeah, Rodney Howard didn't start playing basketball until his sophomore year of high school. So 
when you consider when most guys start to play, five years old, whatever it is, yeah. still a little bit new and raw. Yeah. But a fifth-year senior transfer from Georgia Tech. A lot of talent for Rodney Howard. Under a minute to go. And Wallace too strong with the jumper. Strong rebound for Newman. Hard outlet with Edlin standing about five feet away. Yeah, had a little, little too much heat on it. Went off Edlin's fingertips over the top of her bench. So Campbellsville will get it back. 20 on the shot clock, 51 on the game clock. Quick pass inside for Milburn. Off the shot fake, Howard did not fall for it. And Wallace missed the three. Edlin feeds Allen. Allen off the bounce. Finds Columbe. Just a little long. I mean, the, I have seen a lot of shots like that for WKU. Just barely off the mark. High percentage looks for Western. Six for 21 from downtown, though, at 29%. Two second difference game and shot clock. Good denial for Colin Bay. Milburn's had the ball for a long time. Gives to Wallace and an offensive foul. Milburn handed off and moved that hip into the defensive player who was trying to get through the screen. Official right on the scene, called the foul. Toppers will inbound from the sideline in front of their bench with seven seconds to go. You see the on the replay, Colum Bay took the took the hip and sent him to the turf. Five seconds here for Edlin. Gives to Allen, three seconds. Allen creates space and is off the mark at the buzzer. But a 19-point lead for Western Kentucky, 52-33, in their first regular season meeting against Campbellsville since 2019. See the tops with big advantage, points off turnovers, 11 to zero, points in the paint also heavily in favor of the Hilltoppers, 30 to four. So that's how they've been able to build the 19-point lead. So far, so good for the Hilltoppers at halftime. About to get the second half rolling here at Diddle Arena. 19-point lead for Western Kentucky, trying to move to 3-0 at home this season. How it was a first half that started out pretty hot offensively for Western, and that began with the defense. Yes, it did. Uh, good uh, steal and a, and a finish by Tyrone Marshall. Tyrone got in on the three-point shooting fun. He came in 0 for 8 on the season. He's hit three in the first half here against Campbellsville. Also, Christian Lander, who's uh, struggled from beyond the arc, uh, he, uh, he came in four of 15 prior to this game, and he's hit a couple of this one as well hit f in four attempts. You see him there from the left wing. Uh, now kick out to Lander, top of the key, favoring the left side, and uh, he's good with a couple threes. Then four, oh yeah, how about the steal and the finish by Lander? Very good hops Lander shows there. Now you see Penny getting in the business. He's 33% shooter on the season for the Tigers. He also hits some long range bombs for the Tigers. Yeah, Penny with 12 points to lead the way. Three of three from distance, Hal. Uh, Campbellsville was hanging around in the first half. It was 27 to 25, but behind Lander in a six point spur on his own, they started to really create some separation. They did, and uh, they needed to. They, they were having a lot of missed threes that resulted in opportunities to score on the other end, so Campbellsville's taking advantage of that. Tops were not playing great defense, but as their offense picked up, so did their defense, and held, uh, held Campbellsville to 31% shooting in that first half, Jack, and from long range, three of 14, which is 21%. Big question coming into this game was, could Campbellsville's offense, which is great for the NAI level, still run efficiently? It did for a little while, but ultimately Western size and athleticism really started to leave its imprint on this game. It did, and uh, you know, Campbellsville was able to get fouled in the act of shooting several times, so they shot 11 free throws in the first half, only six for the Hilltoppers, and uh, Campbellsville was a plus four on the make column there for at the free throw line. Western's had the lead at halftime quite a bit this year, but the last two games they lost despite a lead at the break. A quick bucket out of the break for Jace Wallace. A little backdoor cut. We've talked about that a lot in the first half. He was able to get open momentarily, but had to create a shot underneath up and under. 
Nice pass inside for Howard. Yeah, boy, that pass just barely got past the defense. Milburn and uh, big Rodney Howard able to put it down with some authority. You know, Brandon Newman's pretty skilled at feeding the post. He had the chance to uh, send it in to Zach Eady while at Purdue. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good target. He doesn't have a seven foot five guy here to throw it into. Has to be a little bit more pinpoint with 6'11", Rodney Howard, but still. McHenry looking for Howard. Instead, whips it around the wheel. This is Newman. Bounce pass in for Howard. Attacks the rim, left it short. Good contest for Clements. Yeah, did a, Howard did a good job pinning his defender up the lane on his left hip, but just couldn't finish the deal down low. That's the next level for Howard, finishing those contested yes, shots. indeed. Kobe Penny, 12 points in the first, and hits his first three of the second. He's four for four from distance. Four for four, and that one was somewhat challenged, but it was long range. He is a darn good shooter and the top shot maker for this team with Cam Vick out due to injury. Marshall on the drive, not bailed out on the shot. Foul was not called, so Campbell's go back the other way. Miscommunication there with Milburn and Jordan Graham. There's the aggressive man-to-man -man defense for Western, causing a turnover. Makes you do things that you don't want to do. And he, Milburn tried to pivot a couple times to get away from the defense and then fired one out of bounds just down to our right. We've drawn comparisons to the Kentucky State game a lot. That's the last home game that Western played against a non-D1 team. The defense for Western has been better so far than that Kentucky State game as Newman hits a three. It has, it really has, and, and that's the that's the big difference maker, I think, is when you can make a difference on the defensive end. There's a foul on the reach in. Jace Wallace has been getting to his spot so far, and has a chance to cash in for two at the line. See Wallace backing in, getting into the paint, gets the shot away, fouled on it, so he'll have to earn two at the line. Wallace began his career at Motlow State Community College as a freshman in Lynchburg, Tennessee. And came over to Campbellsville the last couple of years. He's been a key player, gets to the line a lot. Big time scorer for this team, led the team in scoring the last couple of years. Coming off his first double-double of the season last game, one assist shy of a triple-double. And Wallace now with six tonight. Again, Campbellsville playing their only Division I opponent this season, technically an exhibition for the Tigers. Newman off the hop step, missed with the left, and out to Clements. I think Graham got a piece of that. Off the foot of Wallace, Lander hustling on the sideline out of bounds to Campbellsville. He's been energetic this game. He has been. He's got lots of energy to burn. Dante Allen in. He replaces Newman. Newman been a little more aggressive offensively. He's hit two long-range shots for the toppers. Newman has a good relationship with Steve Lutz, former assistant coach for Brandon when he was at Purdue for a couple of years. Penny almost five for five from downtown. It was online. He's human. Lander drive and kick. Colum Bay off the shot fake with the left. Tapped out right to Lander. On the attack, Lander. Almost spun at home, but was fouled. Long rebound, Lander coming in from the right wing, picks it up, takes it in with his strong hand, the left hand, got fouled in the in the act, so he'll have a couple free throws here. You get immense talent for Christian Lander, five-star recruit at a high school, offers from Louisville, Michigan, goes to Indiana, big-time program not too far away from home. Just didn't work there. Initially recruited by Archie Miller, then Mike Woodson comes in, likes the setup here at Western under Steve Lutz. Hard off the iron on the second free throw, but Rodney Howard working the offensive glass. Kick out to Allen. He's a good three-point shooter when he's on, just been cold tonight. Penny in transition, leaned in. Lander may have gotten a piece, got a second block, and taps it out. Oh, it looked like that was off Campbell's Ooh, I think it was. I think it was. Graham looked like he kicked it out of bounds. And the band and everyone on that end agreed with that, disagreed with the call. How about Lander with two blocks 
and probably should have earned it back to Western, yep. but didn't get the call. Yep. That's the way it rolls sometimes. Wallace in the paint, fires up from mid-range, and he knocks it down. Oh, steal for Penny here, goes over the top, way short, and tried to save it off Jackson. Five on four for Western. Clements picks the poppet, pocket, Penny trailing the play, and lays it in easily. Well, you know, Comble had two turnovers in that one possession. A fortunate break there for Campbellsville with Penny trailing. Wide open on the cherry pick. All of a sudden, a 14-point game again. They're looking for Howard. Lander takes the three and hits. Christian Lander is on fire. Three of five from long range. That's, uh, that's what we need to see, and that's what he needs to see. He needs to see that ball going through the hole. He's defending Penny, who's got the hot hand for the Tigers. 15 points for Lander and a career high for Christian. Back cut, it's Penny, goes over the top. There's another baseline back cut. Burned Lander that time on the cut in from the left corner. Lander tries again. Contested that time. Starting to get a little bit up and down here. Wallace is left alone and hits it. Campbellsville slowly creeping back into this game, down just 12. Tops are missing shots, missed six of their nine shots so far. Campbellsville has hit six of 11. Column Bay to Allen. And the rebound to Milburn. The game seems just a little bit looser. Clements. Steve Lutz, made, yep, he's going to call a timeout right here and get the guys refocused. There are three fresh jerseys set to come in after the timeout. It is a single-digit game. Nine-point lead for Western now after leading by 19 at the break. Campbellsville will not go down quietly on the road. How about the Campbellsville Tigers out of NAIA and the Mid-South Conference? Again, these two separated by about 90 minutes. Campbellsville, an hour south of Louisville. Opened in 1906, small school, about 13,000 students total, inc including online graduate students. They've come on the road with some force after an 8-2 and two start. It's their only exhibition against the D1 team, and they're playing like it's their only opportunity to show out on this kind of stage. Yeah, well, they've hit six of their 12 shots, two of five from long range. They've outscored the toppers by seven in this half alone. Tops again cool from the field at three of ten. They have hit two of their four long-range shots, however. So let's see if the tops, I know Coach challenged them in that timeout to pick up their defensive efforts. Starting to look a bit, a little bit loose on both ends before the timeout. Western with it, out of the break. On the baseline, Marshall. Feeds for Fay, out to Moore. And tapped away back to McHenry, but he lost it. And now Campbellsville scoops up for a moment. Marshall Bay <laughs> lost it and it somehow went in. Fortunately, there are no pictures in the scorebook. That was an assist in a bucket, but it certainly didn't look like that. Nobody could grab the ball. Dragon possession. Somehow back to an 11 point lead for Western after that. Nearly an overthrow for Wallace. Bounce pass to Gordon. Facing up on Bay on the drive, had it stripped out to Penny. Four threes tonight, takes the two instead. A little bit too strong. Gordon missed the tip and the rebound to Fay. A lot of traffic in there that time. Fay comes out with it for the team in white. McHenry through traffic, got it back through three Campbellsville jerseys, gets the second to go. It's a kind roll that time. McHenry quiet today in the scoring column, only four points for him. But he's still been really under control, and I think that's been the case the whole year. Yeah, he has. He's got three assists, one turnover, so you'll take that out of your point guard. He's usually just been a little bit more active in the scoring column than he has been tonight. Don McHenry and Western with four straight out of the last timeout. Now up by 13, trying to hang on against Campbellsville.
13 point lead for Western Kentucky about midway through the second half. Western trying to move to 3 0 at home and 5 3 on the young season. Jack Kaiser, Hal Schmidt, our entire ESPN Plus crew with you. Don McHenry in his first season with Western coming over from Indian Hills Community College. Played his freshman year in Hawaii at Division II Hawaii Hilo. He's bounced around, but he's been under control and running the show for Western this year. He's certainly been the most consistent Hilltopper, leading the way in scoring with 14. He's also 2-1 to one positive on assists to turnovers, 18 assists, 6 turnovers. He gets about 4 rebounds a game, too, so, and shooting high percentage, 46% from the field. Just has a good grasp of what Steve Lutz wants his offense to look like. And like you said, Hal, leading the way offensively for the Hilltoppers this year. High motor, likes to get the ball out quickly in transition and take it all the way if you don't stop him. Well, here he comes. Let's see what McHenry does this possession. Light scoring night for McHenry, just four points, but letting the game come to him. Three assists so far. Marshall off the curl. Hits more. Bounce pass to Faye. Faye backing inside and goes reverse with the right to draw the foul. So Faye being active and patient inside there in, in traffic waiting till the right opportunity to explode and go to the rim. He was fouled in the process, but I do like the fact that he keeps those feet still, doesn't get whistled for turnovers very much. He's had a really nice start to this season. Already a couple of double doubles for Babacar, and he had one over two years at the College of Charleston. He's been, he's been aggressive. He's been a good offensive rebounder for the tops. He's long on that first free throw, hits off off the heel, off the back iron, so misses that one. We mentioned Rodney Howard not playing until his sophomore year of high school, playing basketball. Babacar didn't start playing basketball until 16 years old, growing up in Senegal. So he's also raw as well. Yep. He gets a second one topper, 6 of 10 at the free throw line on the evening. 10 for 13 for Campbellsville this game, but not getting to the line nearly as much as they did early in the first half. Gordon off the spin, showing some skill, missed it short. And Faye fighting for the rebound on the floor, gets it to McHenry. Here comes Western. Newman on the sidestep, got for two. Well, they got it out so quickly. Once McHenry got it at the top of the key in the backboard, he took one dribble and fired it off to Newman on the right wing who took it into the rack. Steve Lutz was clapping after that last play. He likes the turnover and then the transition yes. bucket. I like it too. Hunt feeds Petty and a block from Marshall. Got a full piece of that one. Now Hunt in the mid-range. He is good with that high release. He loves that mid-range jumper. Interception for Wallace and saves it right to Gordon. Long outlet bounces off more to Penny. What a perfect bounce, hit him in stride. Tip play, Tegan Moore went up with two hands and had his hands on it, but it went off of his hands and right into the Campbellsville player for an easy layup. And Moore, he hasn't been able to hit open threes all night, but somehow gets that to fall. Got to find something. That's his first make on the night in five attempts. And he's 0 for 4 of long range, his first two points of the evening. Moore has been good against non-D1 teams here at home. 13 points a game in just 15 minutes a game for Teagan. That pass way over the top from Gordon. And back to Western with a 14-point lead and under 12 to go. Western on the verge of moving to 3-0 at home in command here at home against Campbellsville. Fourteen point lead for Western Kentucky, second half. Jack Kaiser, Hal Schmidt, great to have you with us at Diddle Arena for game eight of Western season. It's an exhibition for Campbellsville. Eight and two start for the Tigers, their best start in five years. And they're hanging around with Western Kentucky so far. Cut the lead to nine here in the second half, but Western behind some good defense has pushed it back to 14. You know, Kobe Penny for Campbellsville has been the most potent offensive player on the floor tonight. He's 8 of 15 from the field, 4 of 5 from long range. He leads all scores with 21. That's 10 above his season average of 10 points a game. And there's still 11 minutes to go. Again, only game 11 
for Kobe Penny since coming back to playing college basketball. Didn't play the last three years after playing his first two at Bellarmine, which was D2 at the time. Took some time off in the game, got the itch again, and Campbellsville was happy to bring him in. And Penny is really starting to find his rhythm early in the season. Here he is from the corner. Would have been his fifth three of the game, was four for five before that miss. Lob intended for Marshall was swatted out of bounds. Jack Edlin had stars in his eyes on that. It was really a tough pass to connect on from half court. There just was no space in there. Topper's fortunate to regain possession. Jack, as a freshman, will have to learn to make better decisions on passes in transition like that. Whenever he's in, he wants to push the pace. Oh, he definitely does. Lander's having himself a game. Lander bringing rain with that high arcing shot from the right wing. He's now three of six from long distance. Barely hit the net and a game high 15 points for Western. Gordon rattles it in for the mid range. Gordon. Noah Gordon out of Mount Vernon, Indiana. Played at three different high schools. This is his third college as well. As Lander cashes in, plus the contact. Lander's really feeling it here this evening. Takes that ball after just hitting a three. Takes that one in from the left side, fouled in the process. So it's the hoop and the harm, as they say. We'll see if he can finish the deal here at the free throw line. Only played 10 minutes a game last year in his first year with Western Kentucky. They expect a lot from Christian Lander coming off the bench this season. A career high 17 points, offensive rebound for Allen, and he'll take Lander's place at mm. the line. And Lander hard on the free throw. He's usually a very good free throw shooter. That one was hard and resulted in a long rebound that Allen was able to rein in, and he was fouled on the put back attempt. Two of Western's better three-point shooters in Allen and Lander. Dante has been a little bit cold to start the year. 0 for 9 the last two games from three. Hasn't played a ton so far tonight. 0 for 4 from downtown. But when he's in a rhythm, he can be a great shooter for this team. He's a pure shooter for sure. He's become a pure maker. Starting seeing some of those go down. He hits both free throws. The only returning starter from the end of last year. Again, this is a brand new team. Still figuring it out early in the season. New head coach as well. Game eight for Western, trying to move to five and three. Out of bounds off Christian Lander. It'll stay with Campbellsville. You see Noah Gor Gordon at the top of the key, big man for them, 6'7", 245. He's their leading uh, as far as assist to turnover ratio. He's the best on the team, 33 good ones, 14 bad ones. You see him very uh, delivery-minded. They're trying to get a good bounce pass. We'll talk about delivery. That was a heck of a delivery, again, on the high release for Hunt. He continues to hit from about 15 to 20. Moore spinning inside, lost his balance, and was tripped. Moore has become more offensive-minded off the dribble than the three-point shot. He missed, he's missed all his three-point attempts here. Uh, it's 0 for 4 from distance now. He's putting the ball on the floor, trying to use his size to his advantage of getting in close to the rim. Teagan was skilled at getting to the line at Owen County High School. The most career-made free throws in Kentucky history. Doesn't get the trip to the line, but got the foul there. Here's Lander, star player for Western so far. Almost hit the step back, got the offensive rebound. Allen's left alone, Boom. and cashes in. Able to step into that shot in rhythm from the right wing, well beyond the three-point shot. Saw that one go down, so maybe that can fuel his confidence a bit. Good rhythm shot for Allen. On the roll, Milburn for two. Nice roll to the basket up and under for Milburn. Using the net and the rim as a defender. Keep the defender away from his ball. Son of former Vanderbilt star and Kentucky All-Star, Brian. His dad played in, in college and an All-Star in Kentucky. Aggressive drive for Marshall, and he'll head to the stripe. It's a 16 foul on the Tigers. Topper's been whistled for two. Good morning, good morning. 
Free throws slowly starting to come in more frequently for Western Kentucky. Eight for 13 at the line. You said it, a lot of outside shots tonight. They're only winning the rebounding battle by one, 38 to 37. Rebounding has been a point of emphasis, and I'm sure it will continue to be for Western. Jalen Jackson set to enter the, the game. He played 12 first half minutes. This is his first minutes in the second half. He has three points. 39 minutes last game. Wearing a brace around his abdomen. I mean, off foot surgery as well. A couple of months ago. As Jordan Graham hits the three for Campbellsville. Campbellsville 4 7 from long range. Able to keep them close in this one. Good ball fake from Marshall. Offensive rebound, Faye. Got it out to Allen. Would have been his second straight. Instead, back to Campbellsville. It's been pretty much 20 to 9 points, anywhere in that range here in the second half. Tops uh, finished the half up 19, their longest lead that was cut to nine over the ensuing few minutes of the first of the second half. The Tops have pushed it back out now to 17. Good denial for Allen. Pick and pop, Milburn. Off the heel, rebound, Marshall. And he's called for travel going down to the ground. Thought he was hitting the face. He was hitting the face. So <laughs> he wasn't called. And it was not. He goes to the floor with the ball, so that is, by definition, a travel. 17-point lead back to Campbellsville, coming out of the break. Tigers doing the best they can to hang around, but Western in control. Tyrone Marshall Jr. came off the bench for the first time this year against UNC Asheville. He had a season-high 12 points and took a career-high 12 shots. Back in the starting lineup tonight, and that offensive confidence has carried over. He's had a good night offensively, 5 of 8, 3 of 4 from long range. He was 0 of 8 coming into this one. He's got four boards, three of those on the offensive end. Uh, he just got an offensive rebound. It was hit in the face, went to the floor, called for travel, so the ball back to... Uh, Campbellsville, but Marshall's been very active for the Hilltoppers tonight. Only trailing Christian Lander as the leading scorer for Western Kentucky. Hunt almost got it to go. It'll stay with Campbellsville. An NAIA school out of Campbellsville, Kentucky, about an hour and a half away from Bowling Green. Only D1 exhibition for the Tigers this year. They've had it as close as nine here in the second half, but Western well on its way to a 5-3 and three record and a third straight home win to open the year as Milburn hits from the free throw line. Too easy a bucket. He caught the ball inside the free throw line off the inbounds pass. Was able to go up really unchallenged for the short range jumper. Here's Lander. He's had the hot hand today with the left. Got the roll. And Christian Lander, this is encouraging to see this from him. Yeah, he's gaining confidence with every trip down the court. At that time, a little hesitation move got him some space, and he went with the underhanded scoop shot from the left side. Tough shot that he made look pretty easy. Milburn from downtown rolls to Columbe. Jackson trying to push to Fay. Feeds Lander. Oh, that was a heat check. <laughs> It's the Christian Lander show right now. 19 points, career high for Lander. And down goes Wallace, foul on Jackson. Jackson didn't really agree with the call, and there's several fans behind the, that area that also didn't agree with the call. You, <laughs> you can see why. You saw Wallace stumble there. He went to the floor, and Jackson was the closest player to him, so he called a foul on him. Steve Lutz has had long conversations with basically every player as they've come to the sideline this game. He considers himself a teacher. That's his role is to teach and use game situations in which to enforce his teachings. This is a perfect teaching game. Up comfortably in the second half against Campbellsville. 
And Lander comes away with the tip ball. Feeds ahead for Newman. Here comes Brandon Newman. Got tied up and drew the foul. Wallace whistled for the foul for Campbellsville, and Newman will go to the line for the Hilltoppers. This will be free throws 10 and 11 this half for the tops. Newman's had a quiet 10 points tonight. Seven rebounds as well for Newman. Preseason all-conference coming over with the pedigree of playing at Purdue. They're hoping Newman finds his offensive stride in time for Conference USA play. Yes, he, he needs to play to his accolades, and he came in with uh, this coaching staff really relying heavily on him with his, for his experience and his skill to be able to be a viable uh, component of this Hilltopper team. Timeout for Campbellsville. A team that is vastly improved from last year. 12 and 18 last season, 10th out of 12 teams in the Mid-South Conference. This program went to the NAI Final Four a, a couple of times, 2008, 2016. Brent Vernon was on staff, but not the head coach for that 2016 run to the NAI Final Four. He said COVID hit them hard as a program. They're just starting to get back on their feet. Eight and two start this year. They're best in five years. Feels very confident about this group, despite losing some key players to injury already. A lot of scoring depth and a good performance, no matter what the final score ends up being here on the road. Now they've got several guys that are very scoring-minded and capable of putting up big points. Newman hits the second of two. So Campbellsville, I think, will be very viable in their league. Kobe Penny leading the way tonight with 21 points. Jordan Graham air balls a three from the top of the key. Came off a screen at the top, didn't have his feet set under him very well when he let that one go and came up just a few inches shy of the rim. But how, from Western's perspective for a game like this, it, I'm sure you played in a few of these at Arkansas State. Was it hard to focus? You, absolutely, you, you lose track of what you're supposed to do. You want to, you know, you want to run the score up. You want to rub your opponent's nose into it a little bit. I mean, it's just part of the competition. Uh, that's up to the coaching staff to make sure that they stay on focus, doing what they intended to do coming into the game. Don't worry about the scoreboard so much. Yeah, I, I played in several of these. Unfortunately, we were on the receiving end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Happens both ways. <laughs> Rodney Howard. Now with nine points tonight and three for three at the line. 22-point lead for Western Kentucky. And a foul with Graham on the drive. This is the largest lead for Western. It, it looked a little bit dicey with Campbellsville cutting it to nine earlier, but Western has answered well. The Tigers got, got hot there for the stretch in the second half. The toppers weren't being very effective in uh, keeping them off the scores, Collins. Clemens fires away and air balls it right to Graham. Johnny on the spot, and his miss goes right to Wallace. Brent Vernon, the head coach for Campbellsville, did say as Newman fires away from three and got it. He said the final 10 to 12 minutes of the game is really when the athleticism of a D1 team starts to take over in games like this. And the Hill Topper depth, I think, has played a part in that as well, Jack. Toppers have gone about 12 deep in this one. And that's been from the start. They've played a lot of guys from the first half. Yes. Wallace over the top for two. Yeah, Steve likes to keep keep fresh legs in there as much as possible. This two more Hilltoppers go to the scores table. Howard up for the jam. Howard now in double figures for the fourth straight game. And Western quickly approaching 100 points. Again, scoring has not been the problem for Western Kentucky so far, even with the three-point struggles. Howard gets a round of applause as he comes out. And into the game for the first time tonight is B.J. Maribel. 
BJ has not played since the Kentucky State game. He's only played in two games, uh, averaging one and a half points in his two appearances and uh, two rebounds per outing. All three games up in Canada were really competitive. So it's tough to get everybody in in those types of games. Yes. Wallace creates space in the finish. 17 points for him. He's had a nice evening. Yeah, come on strong in the second half here. Maribel lost it out of bounds on his first touch. Couple more subs set to check in for Western after our final media break. 21 point lead for Western on their way to a five and three record and approaching triple digits. Steve Lutz in Western Kentucky leading by 21 with under four to go. Western will move to five and three with a win today. And Steve Lutz just trying to get his team in form before Conference USA play starts. They've got some good mid-major games coming up, starting with Eastern Kentucky this upcoming weekend. Yeah, Eastern Kentucky be here in Diddle Arena, and then the tops hit the road will play up at Marsh at uh, Buffalo. I think next week is finals week, so we'll wait until Saturday to play, but up in Buffalo, and then back down to Wright State in Dayton, Ohio. So that'll be a good set of road uh, opportunities for the toppers. Some good lake level games, and they go one and two at the Northern Classic, but facing good competition in Canisius, Bowling Green, UNC Asheville, all those teams picked to finish in the top half of their conference. And Asheville, a team that went to the NCAA tournament last year. Yeah, they were really good last year. They got six of their eight top scorers back and picked to win again. So uh, they, they were a handful in that game. And Western could very easily have won the last two games. Could have, certainly. But it would take just taking a little better effort than what they were able to muster, unfortunately. Still, you'd rather work through those kinks at this point in the season before conference play rolls around. No question. Which is only a month away, which is hard to believe. Yeah. Yeah, we're right in the midst of it before you know it. Maybe some new conference trips this year to New Mexico State and to Liberty and to Jacksonville State. You'll be heading all over the place. Oh, yeah. Four new teams in Conference USA. They had 11 teams last year, six teams leave, four new teams come in. So a nine-team league now, and Western picked to finish third. Sam Houston State was the, other, the fourth new addition. Yep. Uh, to that lineup for the toppers. And Liberty, you mentioned them as a newcomer, picked to win the league, a very strong team coming over from the A-Sun. They were very good in football this year. Yeah, latest top 25, I believe, college yeah. football playoff rankings. 23-point lead for Western, and Jack Edlin in the game. Faye has a step. And off his knee, out of bounds. Slapped away by Cameron Willis, 5'11", 160 grad student. He's a grad student and a GA for the JV team, actually. A, a walk-on basketball IQ through the, through the roof, and he's gotten more playing time due to some injuries. Almost knocked it down from the corner, but... 5'11", his size has limited him to a certain degree, but he's been a nice spark off the bench. Jack Eatlin with the lay-in, but an offensive foul first wipes it out. I think that's on B.J. Marable uh, trying to clear a space for Eatlin. I, I thought that was a pretty wide lane. It looked like the right <laughs> guard on a, on a curl defensive play. Oh, yeah, you can see Marable in the replay had his arms behind him, pinning the defender in. Sometimes it's wide for a reason. Yeah. Here's Jace Wallace again having a good second half, and he will head to the line for two once again. Yeah, coach, in a coach's ideal world, uh, they would have taken the 19-point half time lead and turned that into 38 in the second half. Uh, but a little ragged. Again, as you mentioned, and that's a good point, you, you tend to lose focus a little bit. You try to make individual plays, and you're not as concerned on the defensive end about making the stops that you were in the first part you, you kind of got to continue to dance with the one that brung you as they say and uh, you need to put keep playing tough defense transition offense oh. 
This is Allen attacking the rim and scores. Nice move for Allen. Yeah, nice soft touch off the glass on the drive in from the right corner. So what's the difference for Western moving forward? What needs to change for them to start winning some of these close games that they're in? Well, make, making shots is key, obviously. Uh, you know, defense will win the close ones more times than not, but ultimately you got to be able to put the ball in the hole. They've done a much better job of that here this evening. And uh, I, I just think they need to make shots, not lose sight of their on the defensive end as well. And as Coach Lutz has pointed out several times, continue to be aggressive defensively without fouling. Well, a great defensive possession there. Able to be aggressive without fouling. They get the turnover. Under two to go. This is Allen. Hits from the corner. Right, right in front of the Hilltopper bench. That pushes the Hilltoppers over 100 now. 101-75. Timeout. Coach Lutz just to make some changes in the lineup. So he's going to get some of the guys in that uh, don't play a lot. See Tyler Olden coming in. Yep, Olden, the junior from Scottsdale. Jalen Dorsey also in. He'll join Marable and Edlin and Tegan Moore in. So a very young lineup for the Hilltoppers right now. Second three for Allen. Ten points tonight for Dante. And that'll be it for Dante. As you pointed out, all subs in. And guys that normally don't get a ton of action. Maribel guarding Gordon. And a kick into the corner for Willis. Be a push on Edlin. Willis will go to the line. That's the eighth field top of team foul. Willis is 67% free throw shoot. He's only attempted three on the year. Yeah, early in the year, that's where the, uh, the totals come into play. The percentages can be a little bit deceiving. Yeah. Will has played his first two years at Tusculum University, D2 school in northeastern Tennessee. Had long hair and a thick beard at that time. How was the uh, the hair game for you back in college? <laughs> in the 70s, are you yeah. kidding? Uh, Flowing, I assume. Yeah, it was. Of course, the coaches were a lot more restrictive. Not everybody, but most coaches were a lot more restrictive on how you could wear your hair. But I had a, a full head, no facial hair. We weren't allowed to have facial hair is a great story about the great John Wooden and Bill Walton after his freshman year. Bill Walton came back uh, after the season with a long hair and a beard. And coach told him, he said, Bill, you know our policy on facial hair. And he said, well, yes, sir, but I think you're, you're really cutting into my personal space by not letting me wear it. And he said, well, Bill, I, I admire you for standing up for your, for your rights, and we're going to miss you. <laughs> Bill Walton shaved his face. Imagine that. <laughs> There's a reason they won 11 national championships. Uh, yes, yes. Tyler Olden's trying to get on the board, and the bench is urging him to continue to shoot. 30 seconds to go. We'll see if Olden gets one more shot off. And most likely not. Shot clock is off. Steve Lutz says, nope, no more shots. We'll hold it. That'll be the final 101-77, 19 ticks to go. But Campbellsville calls off the dogs, and they're going to let the shot clock or the game clock run out here. So Western pulls away in the second half after Campbellsville cuts it to nine. A third straight home win to start the year for Western Kentucky. 3-0 and at home, 5-3 and on the season, and a 24-point win for the Hilltoppers. And there'll be plenty for Steve Letts to work on with his crew. They are prolific film watchers. They love to break down films, and he's got... It, they are, uh, you take a look there at Christian Lander going through the receiving line. Christian, the player of the game tonight, uh, played a really nice game. 22 minutes for the tops, 8 of 14 from the field, 4 of 8 from long distance. He was able to get five rebounds, two assists, no turnovers in that period of time. And yeah, Lander, our Franklin Bank and Trust player of the game. And here's our Kentucky 8 one one play of the game. It was Lander's lone dunk and a breakaway off the turnover by Campbellsville and finishes it with a with a flush. Breakout night for Lander, a career night for Christian. Again, the Indiana transfer with a career high 22 points in the win over Campbellsville this evening. Triple digits for the Hilltoppers, 101-77 the final. 
It was great to have you with us. For Hal Schmidt, our producer, Paige Murphy, I'm Jack Kaiser saying so long from Diddle Arena.